What's going on? Hope everyone is having an awesome day today, and I hope you're all enjoying NBA 2K20 just like me. This video right here is going to be the exact build down to the bone, down to the bone of what I'm using on NBA 2K20. I already made a build for my post score when the demo dropped, and this build is going to be very, very, very similar to that one. I'm just making a couple of tweaks that I think makes this build just that much better. Now, with that said, if you already made the other build, the aforementioned build, and you put VC into it, I would not go out your way to make a whole new build. It's not that drastic of a change to warrant making a brand new build. But I am going to show you exactly what I'm going to be making. So for those that are out there that haven't made a build yet and you want to make exactly what I'm making, or maybe just want some ideas for some builds, this is what is, in my opinion, the absolute best you can have for a post score. So we're going to be a center. You can choose whichever handed you want. And then going on to the actual skill charts. So it's going to be the second one. The second one right here, the shooting and the finishing pie chart. And this one I feel like is going to really make us well-rounded and a great post score. And then the physical profile. You have a couple of options here. You're either going to want to use the second one or the third one based on your own personal preference. These both give you 90 strength. And that's the big thing here. That's the big ticket number that we absolutely need. So the second one is going to give you a more balanced look at speed, acceleration, and vertical, while the third one is going to give you just more speed and acceleration and less vertical. I'm personally going with the second one. Choose whichever one you feel fit for your play style and what you want to have access to. So getting right into it, defense is already going to get maxed out right off the rip. I cannot look at making a center build and not having my defense maxed out. I really wish I could get a little more in here, maybe a couple more badges would be awesome, but it is what it is. Playmaking, we're going to max out the post moves again, and then we're going to get just enough pass accuracy to get three playmaking badges, but we are going to come back to this. Don't worry, we're going to come back. And I also found it actually quite crucial to get an extra shooting badge. So that's exactly what we're going to do here today. In the previous build, I had 16. And this is one of the big changes is we're going to get one extra shooting badge. So we're going to max all this stuff out. That's going to maximize our shooting ability for jump shots as well as maximize our post fade. And then we're going to raise our free throw just enough to get those 17 badges. So we're going to waste a couple of points on free throw and then we're going to get an extra badge. A lot of people haven't mentioned to me that my free throw is really low. They know I play prom a lot. They're wondering why I didn't raise it more. Free throws are really, really easy to time if you know your timing well. So even if you have a low free throw, man, just bring up on them things. Moving on to finishing. Moving on to finishing, the only thing that's going to get maxed right off the rip is going to be your shot close and your standing dunk. And now these extra attributes, we're going to wiggle around a little bit, and you have a couple of options here. Now, some people find it necessary to have six playmakers, or I'm not going to say six playmaker badges, however many they want, but they, some people find it necessary to have unpluckable. And so far from my experiences with the game, I think it is pretty unnecessary to have unpluckable. So you're going to want to get those at least three extra badges if you're going to make your build exactly like mine. So you have a couple options here to get those three extra badges. You can have your post hook all the way up to an 86 and your drama hook will sit at a 51. And that's going to give you these six extra attribute badges right here. Now, if you don't think you need unpluckable, throw those extra attribute badges in here. I think you can throw them just like this and get an extra finishing badge. So you'll have a higher driving lead, you'll have two higher on your post hook, and you'll have an extra finishing badge. So if you feel like you're really, really tight for that extra finishing badge and you don't really think you need unpluckable, this is definitely going to be the route to go for you right here. This build right here would be deemed, in my opinion, the perfect post score build if you do not feel the need for unpluckable. But you get stripped pretty common in this game, so I think unpluckable is, is pretty important. So we're going to throw those last few points on pass accuracy. That's going to give us just enough, the perfect fit four to six playmakers so we can get our postman technician on gold and unpluckable on gold and i know some of you might have concerns that there was talks from like wing about the badges aren't going to help you out that much of a low attribute for that that thing such as our ball handling but trust me man the unpluckable is definitely going to make a difference whether our ball handling is low or not it's, it's nice to have the added boost when you're getting stripped as common as you are and centers aren't commonly having a high ball handling anyway unless you make like the the playmaker one which i still don't even know how how high the ball handling goes on that i don't imagine it can't be that high on a 7-3 player but that's one thing you have to keep in mind so unpluckable is pretty big but if you don't want it like i said you get that extra finishing badge it's up to you but this right here what you see on your screen is literally every single attribute that i have equipped on my own personal build so this is what i'm personally using another thing you can look at if you don't really feel a need for those shooting badges you can you can lower some stuff around a little bit in here you can do like this you have a couple extra here you have five extra you can throw those on your driving layup you can get another finishing badge if you want to but i personally feel it's very important to have these shooting badges and there's so many good badges as we're going to see here in just a second in the shooting category like 
you really want to capitalize on those different shooting badges you get access to so I think the more the merrier for shooting. If I could get even more for shooting without having to give up anything else on the screen, I absolutely would. I know I'm also gonna get a question about the driving layup being a little bit low here at the 51. I'm having no issues with the driving layup. The driving layup in 19, I think they gave us like a 62 with a pure post, something like that. It wasn't much higher than this. Uh, 18 was like a 60. It wasn't much higher. You'll, you'll be fine, I promise you. This is just like if you're, if you're driving to the to the rim essentially maybe like on a fast break or something but nine times out of ten you're gonna be wide open with a driving layup and as you're gonna see we're gonna have plenty of badges that's gonna help us out with this so i wouldn't be concerned with this but yes like i said this is the finished final product it's gonna make you a very versatile post play you can play down low in the post you can play in the pick and roll pick and pop you can shoot the jump shots spot up for those jump shots you're a decent rebounder you're a good defender as you're gonna see once we make a player seven three and whatnot our interior defense is gonna go up to an 88. So I personally think it's looking really good. My body shape is going to be built. If you want to choose something else, feel free. That doesn't have any correlation to how your player actually plays in the game. So it's more just for cosmetics, however you want your player personally to look. I'm going 7-3 without a doubt. You can't convince me not to make this build 7-3. And then the weight is going to go all the way up, which is going to maximize our interior defense. I know a couple people recommended I go to like 270 because I think it gives you some extra something or another. I think you can get like some extra acceleration somewhere in here, or whatever the case may be. But I personally don't think that you should lower your weight at all because it does affect your interior defense, which is huge. If you guys didn't know this year, the block or excuse me, the contest attribute is no longer in the block category it's in the interior defense and the perimeter defense so if you're contesting someone in the paint it's going to take a, a account your per, um, interior defense attribute if you're correct, contesting someone on the perimeter it's going to be your perimeter defense attribute as well as your height and wingspan playing a role so we're going max weight for sure and max wingspan which is going to lower our jump shots a little bit but trust me we're going to have plenty of badges to boost those right back up we're going to be getting dimer passes from teammates people with floor general boosts on when you hit 99 you get plus four it we're gonna be fine don't worry those attributes are not gonna kill us and then this max winning span is also gonna give us a little more block so this is essentially the final product as you can see on your left side those are gonna be our attributes we're gonna essentially have moving forward choosing your takeover i'm personally gonna go with post score takeover off the rip i did hear you could change it i'm not sure if that's true or not whether or not i mean it's not gonna be a huge deal but plus score takeover so far seems really, really powerful. I know they said they took out the the, the animations or whatever where you throw people, but your fade it just is it actually seems to me like it makes fades much more consistent than it did last year. Like it makes them like they're already good in the game, but the takeover I feel like you can just make any fade you throw up at that point if you have your takeover on more so than it did in 2K19. So it's still very good. Me personally though, I'm gonna use plus score in the ones court, and if I can change it, I'm absolutely gonna use rim protector on the twos court and pro -Am. In my mind, how I'm picturing things with the rim protector badge is I'll start off the game with the ball, of course, if I already won, and then I'll probably hit three, maybe four shots right off the rip or whatever and have my takeover. And if we happen to lose the ball, as soon as we're on defense, I already have my rim protector takeover ready to go, should be able to get a stop and get that ball right back on offense. It's not necessarily critical to have this badge to score the post score takeover. It's just kind of a, a nice commodity that you can have access to. But this is what I'm gonna choose right off the rip. If I can change later, I will change according to what game I play. And that's gonna be it. That's gonna build you a nice interior force. It's gonna compare to Patrick Ewan, Nikola Vucevic, and Jonas Valanciunas. Not a big fan of that Jonas Valanciunas comparison. It's kind of weak, but this build is going to play really dominantly. I'm going to go ahead and move forward and show you guys exactly what badges I plan on getting and putting on this player. Just so you guys know what you should be looking at getting. I'm going to have plenty of badge videos as well dropping, so stay tuned for those. So let's go ahead and take a look at the different badges. Okay, so taking a look straight into the badges, we're going to start off with the different finishing badges that I plan to equip once I get all the badge upgrades upgraded. So, back down Punisher, Drop Stepper, and Pro Touch, all in Hall of Fame right off the rip. Those are, in my opinion, absolute essentials for any post score to have on Hall of Fame. Moving forward, get Contact Finisher on Elise Gold. It's going to help you with those different contact layups. It's going to help you in the paint with your different dunks that you're going to want to be doing. Definitely a great badge to have. You might want to put it on Hall of Fame. That's up to you. But with this particular build, we had three available upgrades left. And there's a number of different places you can put them depending on what you want to do. So it's all up to you. I know one fan favorite that people absolutely love is Relentless Finisher. I'm personally not huge on this badge. So for those that didn't know, Relentless Finisher does not help you make a layup at all. 
All it does is reduces the stamina that you lose if you make contact with someone when you go for a layup. So this badge right here is not helping you guys succeed in the paint. It'll help you succeed maybe longer term. Maybe you can keep doing it more throughout a game. But if you're playing something like twos or ones, your long-term stamina is not really going to be an issue. This is only really necessary for my career, maybe Pro-Am, where your stamina throughout the entire game, four quarters of the game, is going to be a major role. So if you're only playing Park, which I know a lot of you are, I personally can't really justify grabbing this badge in my personal opinion. So that's there. If you want to put your extra three on there, you can. It's not a terrible choice. I just feel like there's better, more efficient badges to equip. The Pooks badge. I'm actually so far seeing as I'm playing and grinding my player that the hook shot seems pretty solid this year. It seems really efficient. Pro touch is also going to affect your hook shots, so keep that in mind. But if you feel necessary, if you feel like you just want to throw up a lot of hooks, deep hooks badge is not a terrible fit. It's going to do exactly what deep fades is going to do. It's going to let you just shoot your hook shots better from any 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 range at all it's not just for the deep range which i know a lot of people thought this activates close to the basket all the way out to far from the basket so that's a decent one that you can equip and pick and roll is also another decent one if you're gonna be playing something like twos threes maybe pro-am obviously if you're only gonna be playing ones with your post score don't waste badge points on this but if you're playing some other stuff it's not a bad choice at all either and the last one that's worth consideration is consistent finisher i personally don't know if this stacks with pro touch though is the issue here I've, I've reached out to the devs they have not replied i don't know if it stacks for pro touch because i tested it and it activates like every time pro touch activates i know it says reduce that penalty for poorly released layups but it literally activates on every level if you're like slightly early it still activates so with that said if it does stack on pro touch i think this is an absolute must have Hopefully I can get some more information on that in the future and we can learn from there. The good news is once you hit 95, you can change up your badges however you want. So if you set it up one way, when you hit 95, we can change it later if we find out something is a little bit better. Now, what am I personally going to do with these three badges? I think I'm personally going to go with Contact Finisher on Hall of Fame and Pick and Roller on Silver. If I'm really feeling the hooks this year, I might change that up to Gold Deep Hooks. But again, like I said, at 95, we can change stuff up. So whatever changes I do make in the future check back on the channel for a video i promise you i'll update you guys on my badges what badges i'm using down the line if i change them so that's what my finishing badge is going to look like my shooting badges these like i said there's a lot in here that are absolutely awesome to have so we're going to have our 17 badges we're going to have catch and shoot on gold dead eye on gold deep fades on hall of fame hot zone hunter on gold range extender on silver and quick draw on silver now, originally, I was not planning on using Quick Draw at all, and I was going to have Hot Zone Hunter and Deadeye both on Hall of Fame, which I thought would be pretty awesome. But unfortunately, the jump shots are mad slow in this game. This is a must-have. I haven't got to test it yet. Hopefully, maybe Bronze will be enough, but I'm thinking it's going to require at least Silver on this particular build. The jump shots are so slow, you have to have this badge. You cannot be having a player without this badge if you plan on shooting any kind of jump shots at all. And it's also going to speed up our fadeaways and our hop shots as well, which is going to give us a little bit easier time and make our job a little bit easier. Catch and shoot is obviously, if you're playing ones, obviously this is not a badge worth throwing on. If you're going to be playing ones, I'd get something like Green Machine, maybe Flexible Release. There, there's a number of different stuff on here you might want to get. Tireless Shooter, Volume Shooter, those different ones are going to be great if you're playing ones. But I'm looking at my build for mostly pro -Am. I'm looking at pretty much everything, pro -Am, twos, ones, the whole nine yards. So catch and shoot is obviously going to be critical when you're playing twos, helping you make those jump shots after you're catching a shoot. I know we're sitting in the mid-60s, but with these different badges, it's going to help us out a lot. Range extender on silver is kind of going in with catch and shoot. This is going to help us out with our jump shots. A lot of people are looking at this badge and thinking it's just up in the middle of this range. That's false. This badge activates anywhere in the court you take a jump shot. It's very similar to the deep fade or deep hooks badge, where in the fact that it just makes all your jump shots more efficient from whatever range. So that's really what it's doing for you. It's making you shoot better in the medium range. It's making you shoot better at the three-point line. So it's pushing out your maximum range, and everything in front of that maximum range is becoming improved as well because your maximum range is longer, if that makes sense. So we're going to have this on silver. If you don't really feel like you need this, by all means, drop that thing to two, down two and put these both on Hall of Fame because these are huge badges. And in fact, I'm really hoping I can have Quaytra on bronze. I really want Hunt 700 on Hall of Fame. I might even only use catch and shoot on silver depending on how that's looking. Hot Zone Hunter though, I think is a very underrated badge. I think this is one of the best badges in the game. So it's gonna boost shot percentage attempts in any hot spots you have on the court. So whether that's a jump shot, a fadeaway, a hook shot, a layup, if you have a hot zone there, it's boosting it. So 
yes, it's in the shooting category, but this helps out your finishing, your shooting. It helps out every single thing. So I feel like regardless of what kind of play you have, but definitely a post score, you definitely want Hot Zone Hunter, at least on gold, in my personal opinion. So we have it on gold. Dead out, we have on gold. It's going to help us with those jump shots, people coming to contest us. And it also activates on stuff like fadeaways, hop shots, so forth. So absolutely want to have your dead eye up there i have it on gold hall of fame would be nice but i don't have the points to spread it unfortunately and in deep phase no brainer hall of fame we're gonna be doing so a lot of fadeaways where a post score you need that thing on hall of fame that's a must play making badges of course gonna have postman technician on gold and then like we talked about unpluckable so this is pretty self-explanatory here in the playmaking category you can get more playmaking badges if you guys really wanted to with the build i know a lot of people are very fond of dream shake i do not like it as a badge at all i think it's a waste of points if you don't feel like you need unpluckable the only thing in here that i feel is really worth mentioning is quick first step maybe but that's up to you guys if you don't want to use unpluckable i personally would just save those extra points get that extra finishing badge like we talked about and then you have an extra one of those and better driving layups so this is what this is going to look like though i think unpluggable is going to be pretty necessary so we're going to have these two gold badges moving on to the last one defense and rebounding this is going to vary a lot depending on what game mode you like to play since i'm trying to play everything i have it as well rounded as i can so brick wall is obviously a must and intimidators an absolute must this is going to help you contest players a lot better and then i threw rebound chaser on gold this is going to help us get a couple more boards our player jumps to the rebounds a lot more efficiently and grabs them a lot more efficiently so this is the three i'm going with if i'm on the ones court i'm not going to use brick wall i'll probably throw it on post move lockdown I might use Rebound Chaser, might not, I don't know. I'll probably throw this on something like Moving Chuck maybe, or I don't know what else I would use. Maybe Pogo Stick, something like that. So that's that's your different options right there if you're gonna be playing once. I might honestly just stick with Rebound Chaser and have Post Move Lockdown. But if you're playing once, obviously this badge right here is without a doubt an absolute must. And Intimidator, regardless of what you're playing, you always need that thing on gold. So, that, oh, let, me, let me put this on here just for the sake of the video or sick of getting out of this menu. That's gonna be it though. That's gonna be all the different badges I'm equipping. That is the exact build. If you guys have any further questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section down below. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys are enjoying the game. And I, I wanna know if you guys are gonna use this build. Let me know down below. Feel free to leave a like on the video. I'd appreciate it. But that's gonna be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Good luck to all of you in NBA 2K20 this year. Have an awesome day. I'm out. Peace.